For round three, the drivers and teams will head more than 1,100 kilometers or 700 miles due north from Wetaskiwin, Alberta, driving through Edmonton, northern Alberta, and past the 60th meridian into the Northwest Territories. This region of Canada is extremely desolate, and it will be common to drive for more than one hour at a time between communities. After almost 12 hours of driving, Finishing the journey on Territorial Highways 1 and 2, they would at long last reach Hay River, a town on the south shores of Great Slave Lake. Hay River is the Northwest Territory's second largest community, with around 3,500 people. The area has been used by First Nations peoples, known as the Longspear people, as far back as 7,000 BC. The first contemporary buildings constructed were those of the Hudson's Bay Company, a major fur trader in 1868. The first permanent settlement was established in 1892-1893. Christian missions soon followed, and a school, health center, and a Royal Canadian Mounted Police Station were developed. In 1948, the Government of Canada built a gravel road connecting Hay River to Alberta, making it the first community in the territory to be linked with southern Canada. Hay River served as a terminus of all-season trucking and also had an established commercial fishing industry. Hay River is currently the most northern point in all of North America that is connected to the Continental Railway System. The town also has an airport with scheduled flights to Yellowknife, the territorial capital, as well as Edmonton and Fort Smith. There are a number of churches, four schools, and one community radio station, plus a few rebroadcasters of three Yellowknife stations, including my personal favorite, 100.1 The Moose. The main languages in the town are South Slavey, Chippewyan, Michif, and English. Hay River Speedway is an oblong, three-eighths of a mile dirt track that operated from 1959 to 2010. This is one of Canada's most northern racetracks to have ever operated, and it's the second most northern ever in the Northwest Territories. Yellowknife Speedway was further north, but has not been operational in 35 years, unfortunately, due to a lack of local support. Very little information or media on Hay River Speedway exists. In fact, just one extremely pixelated picture proves that this track ever actually hosted racing. However, with a lot of imagination and effort, Tyler Barth has meticulously recreated the track in NASCAR Racing 2003 season, featuring details as small as power lines and a realistic snack bar menu. The story goes that former local Hark racer John Christchurch invested into Hay River Speedway in an effort to get the track back operational and bring racing back to the area. An old late model of his can be seen perched in the infield, and the Hay River community has contributed a plaque in John Christchurch's honor. 150 laps will be the race distance. Even in its rejuvenated state, this track is very gritty. Brutal freeze-thaw cycles and permafrost melt has led to an uneven surface. The inside of Turn 2 in particular is a roller coaster. Drivers are going to be forced to search around for grip and a smooth line. To make passes, drivers will be fighting over real estate on the outside of the track or having to do some nasty slide jobs while avoiding bottoming, bottoming out. In terms of safety, there's metal girders on the outside and to the inside there are tire barriers and a large amount of runoff. This track is a lot like the region it's in. It's challenging, but it's got a lot of character. This race was planned to be run during the midsummer at a 9.30pm start time. In the summer, 9.30 p.m. in Hay River means that there's still plenty of sun left in the day due to its high latitude. Even though in real life it's now January, we're going to pretend it's still summer because God knows the race couldn't be run in the middle of winter. Stay tuned to the Ottoman Empire channel or tune your radio dial to 100.1 The Moose to catch the racing action soon.